What I'd like to share with you today is uh, what I believe, at least from my own memory, is my earliest encounter uh, with God. Now, many of you know that I was raised a Catholic, and uh, praise the Lord for the Catholics. How many of you know some wonderful Catholic people in your life, <clears throat> and you see God in them? Um, but as I look back to my own childhood and the times that I had spent with the Lord, I, I oftentimes, when I find myself here at almost 60 years old, I wonder to myself, how in the world did I get here? How in the world did we end up, most, and many of you will have the same story or similar story to mine, that there's something that God did in each one of our lives when we were quite young that attracted us to him, to his goodness, to his purposes, to the kingdom of God, however you would describe that. And so as I share my little story with you today, I just want you to be, to open your heart and spend a little time with Ian as a 10 or 11 or 12 year old boy as you watch this. That there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed and all went to be taxed, every one to his own city. For to disobey the Roman emperor meant certain death. Oh, there were young people and old people. There were the famous and mighty, and some not yet known, but whose names would eventually linger and be revered for all time. There were good people who could ill afford the cruel tax about to be imposed upon them. And there were others. Servali, the little drummer boy, Arab. Are, are those animals dancing, Ben Harimet? They certainly are. Faster, old friends, faster. You, Samson, smile. And you, Ben Baba, be lighter, happier. Oh, Joshua, you can do better. Oh, with this marvel in my show caravan, I will be as rich as Solomon. But it is said, Aaron dislikes all humans. He will not join us willingly. Fool, why do you think we brought the rope? Ah! Let me go, do you hear me? Let me go! Get the camel! <laughs> Donkey too, fool! A lamb, you all grabbed a lamb! How? I have only two hands! Stop concerning yourself with details! Do it! <laughs> Drummer boy, you may not believe me, but this is the luckiest day of your life!
the jackal. Only he could have talked Aaron into visiting the crowded city. For you see, Aaron truly did hate all people. Now, it wasn't always this way. For Aaron was once a happy farm lad, the son of a shepherd. Father! Mother! And why this exceptional greeting today, my son? Oh, no reason. Happy birthday, Aaron. Oh, father, mother, did you bring me something? I don't suppose this would interest you, young man? A drum, my very own drum, oh, father. Try it out, Aaron. And perhaps because it was a gift of love, the drum had an almost magical quality. And the animals, when they heard it, began to dance to its sound. But Aaron's happiness was to end all too soon. For one night, bandits of the desert attacked. What's going on out there? Father! You must run, my son. Escape us, run! They burned the farm and took the sheep, and Aaron's happy life had changed forever. And so Aaron roamed the land, a lonely orphan. His only friends, three of the farm animals who had escaped. He vowed to hate all humans for what they had done to his family, and he kept that vow. In Matthew chapter 2, and we have the story of Jesus. This is kind of an adaptation, I think, of that story. It's got little bits and pieces of it that show up. But we can see that, uh, you know, we, we, the, Matthew chapter 2 starts out by talking about the Magi, the wise men from the east. It talks about Herod, the king of the Jews at that time. It talks in Luke chapter 2, it talks about shepherd people. Uh, it goes along and it refers to the same kind of process that is going on in their lives. The Magi coming because they were desperate. They had all that this world would have to offer them. And yet they were still desperate for life to, to find meaning. They were desperate to discover what it was that God was doing in the earth. We can talk to Herod at this point. We can see that he was a tyrant, a cruel and vicious man. Paranoid so much that he killed his own sons because he was concerned about them dethroning him. We can see that there's shepherd people, there's Jerusalem people that are referred to here. They're all afraid. They're all terrified by different things that are going on around them. You know, we can all find our story just the same as Aaron found his story, that the traumas of our lives, the difficulties of our lives have all led us to the place where we would say, you know what, I need to become more self, I don't need to worry about myself. I need to deal with the issues of my own self. You see, what happens in this story, <clears throat> they use the word hatred. And we kind of think about hatred to think about Herod, maybe, a, a wicked and evil tyrant and his cruelty towards other people. <clears throat> but I wonder whether the story is actually about the kind of hatred that Aaron had. And that was a different kind of hatred. It wasn't cruel. It wasn't vicious. It didn't hurt people. Uh, it just backed away from everybody. It was just apathetic. It was unresponsive. It didn't care. It withdrew itself. I think the lesson more in this movie, or this cartoon, is more the type of hatred, perhaps, that you and I would experience, where we just build a small wall around our lives because of the traumas, because of the difficulties. Those are all very true and very real. But we build a wall around ourselves and we make sure that all of humanity, all the issues of life, all the people that could possibly hurt us or, or negatively affect us, and we just make sure, like Aaron did in this story, that all those things are at arm's length from us. You know, I don't think that's the answer. I think it's what we normally tend to do as human beings. I think we tend to, to withdraw from everything. I used to think, you know, we, we had this, this is a piece of side action here. Um, I don't know if you heard a couple weeks ago that the U.S. Uh, average lifespan has gone down. And the reason it has gone down is because of two primary factors. One, uh, opioid overdose, overdoses and uh, young people's suicide. 
And so I, I was challenged by that a couple of years ago. I, was, I thought that I had the, part, the equation figured out. I figured that suicide and drug addic different addictions, and I'm not, you know, I'm not criticizing anybody who struggles with those things. I used to think that that was completely a hopelessness issue. That if we could just give people hope, then we wouldn't have that problem. And then I went to Africa, to different countries in that continent, and I met a whole bunch of people who did not have hope. But they also did not have all of these negative problems. The suicide rate, is, although it's real over there for sure, it wasn't just because of hopelessness. And what I began to discover is that there's two factors that draw us into that curve of sadness, or excuse me, withdrawal, sadness, depression, and then for some, that extreme response. And what I've discovered is that it's made up of two factors. Hopelessness is certainly one of them. But can I tell you, loneliness is the other one. And when you have that dastardly mix of those two things, the lethal mix of those two forces. Now watch what happens in Aaron's life here when he uses the traumas of his life as the as the catalyst or the excuse that empowers him to separate himself, to become a very lonely boy. Wow. And each one of us need to, as we're looking to have the life that God has for us, each one of us have to take a look at his story, realizing that his story is our story. None of us can watch this movie and say, yeah, I have no idea, that has no, that has no relativity in my own life. That's not true, all of us have seen our our own responses to the traumas in our lives as they produced that same kind of a withdrawal, a separation, a distance that we put between us and those people around us. Go ahead and let's jump back into the cartoon. The troop was chased out of Jerusalem by the mob. Boy, you shall pay for this indignity. Ben Harimat, look! By the hounds of heaven, it is the caravan of a king. We're in luck. Can I believe my luck? Two kings. Hold me up. Three. Three kings. And behold, there came wise men from the east, three kings of the Orient, and lo, the star which they saw went before them. <laughs> Yes, it was the star of Bethlehem which shone so brightly and graced the lonely, darkening desert with its silver light. But the little troop did not see the star's beauty, for the souls of Ben Haramid and Ali were too filled with greed, and the heart of Aaron too overflowing with hatred to take any note of the wonder just above them. Now you listen, drummer boy. If you give this one performance, Half the money shall be yours. Then you are free. Aaron agreed, only because he knew that with the king's money, he would be free to go his own way and never again have to trouble himself with humans. And so they approached the three kings, Melchior, Gaspar, and Belthazar. It is night. We must break camp. And swiftly. The star waits not for us. Strike the tents, pack the camels. No, don't go. We just got here. Halt. Out of my way, we must perform. Down, knave, down. Ben Haramed, a knave? Uh. I am crushed. Lower your spears. These desert vagabonds seem to mean us no harm. Why do you come to us? We are a troop of players, your majesty. Uh, majesties. We have no time for making merry, as you see. We break camp and... Well, that's ridiculous. 
Begging your pardon, nobody travels the desert by night. We do, for we follow the star. How very convenient. But, uh... Enough. Be gone. Now to resume our journey. Earlier stage where uh, the little drummer boy, Aaron, had this negative experience with his family. Uh, and then that responded by having, you know, the separation and the withdrawal from all the things that are going on around him. He kind of thought that that would, say, that would solve his problem. He felt that by separating, by withdrawing, and just by hating you enough so that you don't have the opportunity to hate me, that all the problems are going to go away. Can I tell you that's not my observation? That's not your observation either. That what actually happens is, is that as we choose that particular path, as we go down that road, we have these traumatic events, we have this separation and negativity going on. All that happens is it multiplies in our lives. Just like in Aaron's story, he's wandering around the desert, minding his own business, only to find this Ben Hadermed guy uh, who puts him into an even worse situation, which compounds the hatred that he has for people around him, and it just keeps getting worse and worse and worse. But just like in the story, God is always sending a star. There's always something that God is putting into your life, into my life, if we would just simply respond to it. He's going to bring people who are looking for God, just like you are looking for God, people who are looking for answers, just like you're looking for answers. The key, and again, from the, from the, 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 the little cartoon, the, the neediness of the people, Ben Hiramed and Aaron, they said they didn't even notice the star. They saw the kings, but they didn't see the kings. They saw the gold. They saw the frankincense. They saw the riches. They saw all those things. They didn't realize that's what God was bringing these people into their lives in order to accomplish in their lives. All we need to do in this moment in your life, perhaps, or maybe over the Christmas season when we're very focused on the, these details, we're very focused on the life of Jesus, we're very focused on the love and the compassion and the generosity and all of those good factors that are part of this holiday. Are those a star for us in our lives? Are they the personification of one of the wise men in our lives to say, okay, I think there's a season now for me to begin to take some of this stuff seriously so that I can stop the cycle of these things going on in my life and then just getting worse and worse and worse in my life. Go ahead, guys. Let's finish off this cartoon with the final piece. Oh, Baba, you mustn't die. You mustn't. Who can help me? Yes, the kings. The kings are wise. They will be able to save Baba. Please, I've got to get inside to see the kings. You must let me through. And when Aaron came to the entrance of the stable, he could hardly believe what he saw. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Oh, your majesty, you must... Shh. Oh, the player boy. My lamb has been injured. You must save him. He is near death. Oh, lad, there is nothing I can do. But, but you are a king. A mortal king only. But there is a king among kings who would save your little friend. The babe? I do not understand. It is not necessary that you understand. Go to him. But uh, I... I have no gift to bring. Go. Look upon the newborn king. <laughs> Sweet to 
And as Aaron looked at the babe, he thought it was the most beautiful sight he had ever seen. And yet, there is something more about him. So much more. Your gift, little drummer boy, given out of the simple desperation of a pure love, is the one favored above all. See? Aaron's heart was filled with joy and love. And he knew at last that the hate he had carried there was wrong, as all hatred will ever be wrong. For more powerful, more beautiful by far than all the eons of sadness and cruelty and desolation which had come before was that one tiny crystalline second of laughter. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Adaptation. <clears throat> I'm going to read you what really happened. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that Mary should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes. She laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there was in that same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over the flocks by night. And, though, and lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone around about them. And they were sore, very afraid. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you great tidings, good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all the people. And unto you is born this day in the city of David, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you, and you shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. <clears throat> and suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace and goodwill toward men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us go now even unto Bethlehem, and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord has made, us, made known to us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in the manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the sayings which were told to them concerning the child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told to them by the shepherds. And Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. You know, I have this beautiful opportunity with my granddaughter, Olivia, when we go outside and we see the moon. She loves the moon on clear nights. She loves it most of all when there's a full moon. I've become one of those moon gazers because of that, and I'm awestruck at the awesome nature of just going outside in the nighttime and seeing the moon. Could you imagine what these people would have experienced this particular day? These shepherds that were out, just as you and I would in the middle of the night, gazing up at the moon, and all of a sudden, out of heaven appear these angelic beings with a message from God, a song to be sung. You could only imagine what would have been truly happening in this scene. What the little drummer boy, if he is real, <clears throat> which I'm sure he is not. But he's real in each one of us. As we take a look at that moment, and he says in the story here, so there's something different about this moment. How many of you know from scripture? Yes, there was something radically different about this moment in all of history when the heavens opened up, when God himself could finally gaze down with the host of angels and look upon the earth and be able to say glory to God in the highest and peace to all men. Can I tell you the effect that it had on Aaron, I'm trusting that same effect it will have on each one of us as we renew our commitment, renew our lives with God here in this Christmas season. Can I tell you what Aaron did? <clears throat> Aaron decided to turn his life from being a victim to being victorious. He decided to stop being reactive to life and start being proactive to life. He decided that <clears throat> he was going to seize life by the hand and begin to have an active part about the way his life was going to be decided. 
the advice for the one king as he went up to Aaron was that Aaron just lay down all of his troubles, his little lammy that got injured. He just said, just go look upon the child. Thanks so much for joining us today. We pray your life was impacted by the service and that you were able to feel the tangible love of Jesus fill whatever space you're listening from. Maybe you found this message and you've never had the opportunity to come into a personal relationship with Jesus, or you've known about him but have been far from him. We want to give you the opportunity to make his love a daily reality in your life. Jesus came to this earth and died on a cross so that you and I could be close to him. He wanted to wipe away every disappointment and bring you into a life of purpose and meaning, one that will impact this globe for good. So if you'd like to begin this journey with Jesus today, then repeat the simple prayer after me. Dear Jesus, I'm praying this prayer because I know that I've made mistakes and have been living without you. I apologize and I trust that you will forgive me. I accept your love and grace and ask that you would be my Lord and Savior. Help me believe in you and love you every day. Help me to show the world what you're like and how great your love is. I commit to live for you from this moment forward. In Jesus' name, amen. All of our Light City family are joining with heaven and celebrating over the commitment you just made to have Jesus as the Lord of your life. We have resources available for you to help you on this journey, but most of all, we're praying for you. Send us a note at info at golightcity.com to let us know about the decision you've made today. We have resources we'd love to send you uh, with some easy steps on how to go from here so that you can discover God in a real and meaningful way. If you have a prayer request, our team would love to connect with you and partner with you to see God transform your life. God bless you, and we look forward to hearing from you soon.